So this week we're doing perimeter and area, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna quickly go over perimeter and area of a circle. We're gonna do a bunch of math concept problems and then we'll do another one of those quizzes reviews, okay? So this kind of topic is not really a good way to practice, not, not really like a way you can learn how to do every single perimeter and area problem. The best way to do it is just to practice a ton of problems. And then you're gonna get very familiar with how they work. And then, yeah, that's basically the best way how to learn it. So we're only gonna go briefly with new content and then you're just, you're just gonna to have to practice a ton of stuff, okay? The perimeter and area of a circle, I did not go over this before. So just in case you did not know, the perimeter, if we say this is the radius, then we have the perimeter equals two pi r and pi is I think you already know what pi is equal to one four. Okay. And the area is pi times r squared. Okay. There's a special word for the perimeter. It's called the circumference. There's a special word for perimeter. It's basically the same thing. Okay. So when something asks you for the circumference of a circle, you're just going to give them the perimeter. Okay. Now I'm going to go on to math counts problems. But for this one, let me show you how to do this, okay? So for a lot of these area and perimeter problems, you're gonna have to add or subtract areas out of different areas, okay? So let me show you how you do this. So we have this first problem here. I'm gonna do it as an example, and then you'll do the rest of them. Okay, so a square is inscribed in a circle of radius four. Radius four, all right. Someone coming in, okay. Circle of radius four units and the square is inside the circle, and we want to find what this thing is. Well, the first thing we can observe is that this is the same as the shaded area, okay? So all of the areas I've shaded in are congruent to whatever area we want to find later, right? So if we can find the combined area of all of this, and we divide by four, then we get what we need, right? Because this is just one fourth of all of that. So how do we find the area of all of this? Well, if you look at it, that's just the area between the square and the circle. It's inside the circle, but outside the square. So the total area of the circle is this, right? If we take out the area of a square, we're basically cutting a hole out of the circle, which means all we're left with is the stuff we want. So the area of all this combined shaded area is going to be the area of the circle minus the area of the square. Well, we know the area of the circle, that's just four squared times pi. We have to subtract out the area of the square. Well, now this is a little bit trickier. We don't know the side length of the square, but we can find it through the Pythagorean theorem. This is four, this is four. Now we have a right triangle. This is gonna be four times the square root of two, if you were to do that. So, this, so the area of the square would be four square root of two times four root square root of two. 16 times 2, which is going to be 32. So this is the area of the four shaded areas. Okay, but this is not the answer we want because the answer we actually want, or well, the problem said, if we erase all of this, we want one fourth of all of that. So we just got to divide this by 4. Let's cancel out 4 pi minus 8. And that's the answer. Okay, so for a lot of these problems, you're gonna to have to subtract areas out of other areas, or you're gonna to have to add two areas together. Okay, so that's basically how you would do something like this. All right, this is a problem that you could do. If you, um, how about five minutes?
All right, so for this one, we're going to have two points A and B. We're going to be four inches apart, okay? One circle has AB as its diameter. That's the first circle. A larger circle which overlaps the first such that the arc from A to B makes a quarter circle. So what does a quarter circle even look like? Well, it looks like this, right? So it's gonna be a like not as big of an arc as the half circle that we had on top. It's gonna to kind of look like this. It's gonna be a rather big circle, okay? We wanna find the combined area of these two circles. So we can't just add the areas together. Right, that doesn't work. Because if we just add the areas together, then we're adding the area here. Let me label it as red. We're adding this part two times, right? Because if we add the first circle, we're adding this part. If we add the second circle, we're adding this part again. We can't just simply add the two areas of the circles together. Okay, so you have to divide up this area for some somehow. Okay. So the best way I can see it is we can divide into two sections, one up here. Let me use the highlighter. This half circle up here, that won't be hard. And then we're gonna to have to find this section here. Okay, so divide it into two parts now. First, the first part. Well, that's just half of a circle, right? Half of a circle of radius four. It's four squared pi divided by two equal to eight pi. Okay, so that we already know the red part. Now about the blue part, the blue part is harder. So how do we find the blue part? Well, the blue part is just the big circle minus this little section right here. Big circle minus that section. So if we can find the area of the big circle and we subtract out that section, we'll have the area of the blue section, right? So what's the area of the big circle anyway? Well. We know that this four is right here for this big circle, right? Because it's part of the quarter circle. So the four is right there. We have a right triangle here with the radius X on both sides. So if you do the Pythagorean theorem, you'll get two square root two as X, okay? So we know that the radius of the big circle will be two square root two. So what that means, actually, I don't think it's two square root two. Wait, it is. Okay. Oh, for the big circle, I messed up here. This should be a two squared, because that's the radius. So this is not going to be eight pi. This is going to be um, two pi. Okay. So now for the big circle, that's going to be, the area is going to be two square root two squared times pi. It's the big circle, eight pi. Okay, so the area of the big circle is eight pi, okay? So now we've got to subtract out this little section right here that we don't know what that is. Well, that's that part is right here on, this, on the diagram, right? Well, if you look at this, this part is just the quarter circle area of that subtracted by this triangle here, right? The area of the quarter circle is going to be two pi because that's one fourth of eight pi. And then we just subtract out the triangle here, two root two times two root two divided by two, right? Base times height divided by two. So that's gonna be four. So this, this section right here is two pi minus four. So to get the area of the blue section, it's gonna be the big circle area minus that little section. It's gonna be eight pi minus two pi minus four, six pi plus four. So the negatives distribute the negative, six pi plus four. So that's the area of the blue section. The area of the red section is here, so we just add these two together. Six pi plus four. You get eight pi plus four, and that is the area, okay? So there's a lot of adding and subtracting going on. So if you're not familiar with this right now, that's totally fine. Just do a lot of practice, okay? And the more practice you do, the more familiar you'll get with seeing how to break up these areas so that you know how to find the areas of each of the parts. Okay, so this is another one. This is a very common type of problem. So give you guys five minutes for this one.
Alright, so for this one, let's draw out a better diagram because this diagram it doesn't give us that much space. Well, obviously, you guys are gonna have to draw the diagram. Four, three. We have six right here. So this this dog has a leash of length six. What does this mean? Well, this dog can wander in this space as long as the string is not stretched out, right? But if the string is stretched out, then that's the farthest distance he can he can uh, wander, right? So we want to find, so if this is stretched out, then this marks the boundary. The string is stretched out and marks the boundary of the area in which it can roll, right? Because if the string is not stretched out, it can, it can be anywhere in here, but that's the boundary, okay? So what does this look like? This looks like a circle here, right? Because it has a constant radius. So it's going to go around and around and around. The problem is once you get here, once the dog is here, this is a new pivot point because the leash is going to get stuck on the wall and it's going to pivot now that we have a radius of three, six minus three. Now it's going to look like this. All right. When it gets stuck on the wall, then, well, it's a new pivot, right? It, the, like, it's not like the leash can go through the wall or anything, right? So the leash gets stuck on the wall, which means that we have a new radius of three and that goes around and hits the wall and that's where the dog can stop. The other side, we're also going to go around and around and around. When you get here, there's going to be two right here, and it's going to go right here. Okay, so we have a three fourth of a circle of radius six, three fourths times six squared pi, and we have to add this quarter circle of radius two, one fourth times two squared pi. They have a quarter circle of radius three. Okay. If we evaluate this, it's going to be 36 times 3 fourths. It's going to be 27 pi plus pi plus 9 fourths pi. You can evaluate this fraction. So this will be, um, let's first combine these two. 28. And multiply that by 4. We're going to get um, 112. going to go to 121 over 4. Okay. So obviously, if you didn't get an answer that had pi in it, that's a problem, right? So that's, that's kind of like a check for you. You know this stock is going to go around in a circle. So you got to check. If, if there's no pi in it, then you know it's obviously wrong. There's something you did wrong. Okay. That's just kind of like a double check. You can do it again. Okay, we have this one. This one should be pretty straightforward. It's very, very similar to the one I did at the beginning of class.
Okay, so for this one, it's very similar to the one I did at the beginning of class. What we're basically going to do is we're have, we have to take the area of the square, we subtract out the area of the circle, right? Because that's basically saying, oh, we take a square and we're cutting a hole in it, and all we have left are these sides, right? So if we take a square and we cut the hole in it, then that we're taking out the area. So we have a square, we're taking out the area of the circle inside it. The side length of the square is four, so we know the area of the square is 16. We just need to subtract out the area of the circle. Well, the radius of the, di the diameter of the circle is four, because it's the side length of the square. The radius must be two. So the area must be two squared pi, 16 minus four pi, and that's the answer, okay? This is different from what I did earlier, because when I did it earlier, we only had to take the area of one of these regions. Okay, that problem only wanted us, it was like this. We had a circle and a square. It only wanted us for one of these regions. But here, all four of them are included. So we're not going to divide by four. We're just going to keep it like this, 16 minus 4 pi. Okay. This problem now, five minutes for this one. Actually, I realized this is not a good problem. So let's, let's do the next one.
All right, so the trick for this one is we draw the, the hexagon. Between six sides, okay? Well, there's no formula for the area of a hexagon. Well, there is, but it's not worth uh, memorizing. So regular means it has all four sides of length, four. What does this mean? Well, there are many ways you can go about this. One way is to divide this up like a pizza. And now we have six equilateral triangles of side length four. Well, we know how to find an area of an equilateral triangle. We drop this down, we have 30, 60, 90 triangles. This will be two, this will be two root three. So two root three is the height times four. Divide by two, that's the area of one equilateral triangle. Four root three, that's the area of one equilateral triangle. We have six of them. So we multiply by six to get the area of the hexagon. 24 square root three, that'll be the answer. Another way you can do it. Instead of sectioning it this way, you can section it this way. What does this do? Well, we have a rectangle in the middle. And look, we have 30, 60, 90 right triangles. Right, this is four, this will be two. This will be two root three, two root three. Okay, so the area of these two 30, 60, 90 right triangles, well, one of these 30, 60, 90 right triangles will be two times two times square root three divided by two, which will equal to two root three. That's one 30, 60, 90 right triangle. We have four of them. So this goes to eight root three. Now I gotta add the area of the rectangle. Well, we know the side length, the height of this rectangle is just two root three plus two root three, four root three times four, 16 root three. So you have to add these two, we get 24 root three. So there's many ways to do these problems, okay? So it's just, there are many ways. So there's not one definite right answer, okay? So this one, I think we should go over. You don't need to actually do this one. This one basically, um, you need to memorize some kind of um, topic to do this. So the greatest area that can be enclosed by a rectangle whose perimeter is 20 units. Well, if we think about it, if I have a rectangle that's very, very thin, like we're gonna have to look at extremes here, all right? So when you're doing like science or physics in, in the future, you're gonna have to look at extreme cases and see and use those extreme cases to figure out what works. So if I have this very thin rectangle here, let's, let's say it's so thin, that it's like microscopic, but it still has a perimeter of 20 units, which means this side length basically has length 10, this side length basically has length zero. So what does this mean? The zero area, right? Obviously this rectangle is not gonna have any area at all. Let's look at the new, the other extreme. The other extreme is if we have it this way. Well, again, it's just, just a straight line. It's not gonna have any area at all. But as we move it out, we're gonna have area. And if we look, these two extremes are both zero, which means that the middle of those two extremes is probably gonna be the maximum. So the middle of those two extremes is that the side lengths are all equal. This will be five, this will be five, this will be five, this will be five. And this is actually true, okay? This makes sense from these two extremes. We can find this from these two extremes that the maximum area that can be closed by a rectangle whose perimeter is 20 units is going to be a square of side length five, okay? The actual proof for this has to be based on calculus. But for now, you can just memorize that for a rectangle, the maximum area will be obtained if it's a square, okay? And for any kind of surface, or any kind of perimeter, any given perimeter, the maximum area it can enclose is a circle, okay? So we have a given perimeter, let's say, we only have 10 yards of fence, okay? We have 10 feet of fence. How do we make the biggest enclosed area out there? You're gonna to have to make a circle, okay? So for any given perimeter, that would be a circle. But for a rectangle, you would have to make a square. Okay, so those are just things you should memorize and look out for, okay? So now let's go to the quizzes. Um, I'm gonna share my screen right here. We have quizzes here. 
start a live quiz. Yeah. All right, so you're gonna do um, joinmyquiz.com 026753. I'll put that in the chat. All right, or you could take this link here that I have. All right, so join the quiz. This is another one of those review sessions, and it's going to be one of those countdown style um, quizzes here. So for every problem, you're going to have one whole minute to do it. And it's not multiple choice, it's a free response. So you're going to have to type in your answer. Okay, so when you're typing your, in your answer, um, just have numbers, okay? There should not be any words in there. It's just numbers in, in your answer, okay? So for the countdown round, what you wanna do is you wanna do as fast as possible, okay? So for a lot of the problems, there are many ways to do it. The most obvious way to do it is probably a very long way to do it, a very inefficient way to do it. So you're gonna to have to find the quickest way to do the problem because you only have that much time. I think we should have, let me see. I think at least 10 people, right? So one thing you can't do is if, um, if I start the quiz and you join, I'm gonna have to kick you out, okay? I'm going to start it at 10.43. Oh, it is 10.43 now. All right, is anyone else not in yet? I think we're good. Okay.
All right, so it's 10.53. I'm going to have to end the Zoom now. But you guys can keep doing the quizzes. It's good practice, okay? But I have typed in the top five right now into the chat. So we have Jonathan, hi, Eva, Adrian, and then Jonathan iPad. Okay, I don't, I don't know if we have two Johnsons in here or something. <laughs> okay. So you can keep doing the quizzes. I'm going to end the Zoom right here, all right?